new video. In today's video, I'm going to be making a cute little pinafore out of a vintage apron. I did post this in a poll a couple of weeks back, seeing if anyone would be interested in it. And I think it was either like middling or low, but I'm still going to do it anyway, except I'm doing it with an entirely different pattern and an entirely different fabric, but that's because I found this adorable pink ghost fabric at Joann's the other day and I <laughs> just love it and it's a bit of a heavier weight so I think it'll be really good as a pinafore as opposed to a dress but I am stuck on what vintage apron I want to use. I really like this Butterwick 8797 because I like the little high waist that it's got going on and I think the little bows are kind of cute whereas I also really like this Simplicity 1805 mostly I like the tiered roughly skirts and I like the scalloped edges and I cannot decide which one I want more because I think they will all look really cute with this fabric. So I don't know what to do right now. I'm thinking what's in my head is I'm thinking of doing the butter wick because it's simpler and I think that would be really float nicely. Also I don't do a lot of butter wig patterns and I think I should, but I don't care for the sash that goes across body. I think I'll use the top bib from the Simplicity pattern because I think that will go better with the style. But the scalloped edges are just so cute. I wonder if I could combine the scalloped edges with the peplum skirt. <sighs> Oh, it just, it's so hard to decide. I just think they're so cute. Okay, all right, decisions made. So let's get started before I change my mind. <laughs> so here's my pattern pieces. From the Simplicity 1805, I'm only gonna be using the pocket and the bib view one. And then for Butterwick 8797, that's obviously where the skirt part is gonna go. And I'm using the waistband from view B where it tapers at the end. And then I'm actually gonna be using the waistband from view C as my straps that go over on this bib. And as far as the back part of this waistband is, I'm just going to use this measurement and make a long strip kind of like this to wrap around the back. This initially only needs one cut, but I'm going to cut two because this is gonna be the front and also the back. I'm also gonna add several inches because this is pretty short because obviously it's an apron and I want mine to be longer. I begin by cutting all the extra tissue paper. I also cut around the pockets and the bibs in parts just to even up the edges. Next, I lay out my pieces, then I trace my pieces, and then I cut my pieces out. Once those are cut, I decide to use the leftover pieces to make bows. I don't really measure these pieces out, but rather just clean up the edges until it vaguely resembles a rectangular shape. I take another scrap and make two smaller and narrower rectangles, which will be used as the bow center. With the small bits cut, I can move on to the skirt portion. Without piecemealing, I have very limited space to work with, but I can add about 10 centimeters to the hem, which I take advantage of. I mark out where the pockets will go before cutting out the half circle. I cut out the center and then split one side open and this side will become the side seams of the skirt. Lastly, I cut out the back waistband. I use the side width of the front waistband to determine the width of the back and cut two. The length should be roughly the same as the front. It was here I also decided to make side pockets as well but I ran out of full fabric pieces, so I cleaned up several awkward angle cuts and joined them together until I have a rough rectangular shaped pocket shape. I sew those pieces together to make one large piece. 
then I iron it, and then I serge it because I forgot the step, then I top stitch it before finally cutting out my pocket shape, then sewing and serging the edges. After that, I can move on to my decidedly less fussy child, the patch pocket, aka my peepee. I sew and serge around the peepee edges, leaving a space open to pull the pockets inside out. And it's at this point you might notice that my peepee -pee is a bit narrow and long, and that is perfectly fine for peepee, -pee, but that was not how I was intending my peepee -pee to look. So to fix this, I am going to add a strip of white bias tape to the center of the pockets and cut down the top. This will help reduce the length and add a little fun aesthetic feature, I think. Of course, when all is said and done, I decide I actually don't want peepee -pee on my pinafore at all. They just get lost in the ghosts, so I scrap the peepee -pee altogether. Bye bye peepee. -pee. I move on from the peepee -pee fiasco to sew around the side and top edges of the bib before deciding it needs to be interfaced. I am, however, running low on interfacing and I'm feeling both pressed for time and cheap. So instead, I piecemeal the pieces of interfacing scraps that I have to make a blanket that mostly covers the bib. I snip the corners and flip inside out, tucking the bottom edge inside and ironing everything flat and crispy. I also made this tiny peepee -pee with scraps from the side peas and sewed it to the front of the bib. I hand close up the bottom edge and add flat hooks so this pinafore is gifted with the power to transform into a skirt at a moment's notice. I whip up the straps real quick by folding them over and sewing the raw edges into tubes. Then, using a convoluted method I convinced myself is quicker than just stuffing my fingers inside, I write the insides out. After that, I iron them crisp, but before I can sew those down, I make the bows. The bow bodies get folded hamburger style, while the bow's cincher is folded hot dog style. I use the same method to pull the insides outside, followed by hand stitching the side closed, tight lacing the bow's waist, and covering it with a mini belt so she looks snatched AF. Now I can assemble the pinafore top by hand stitching the straps in place and securing the bows on. For the waistband, I add interfacing to one front piece and then one back piece, while Mr. Black ensures that I do it correctly. Although sometimes he gets a little too hands-on with his job, he is going for the Supervisor of the Month award. I layer the non-interfacing pieces over top, right sides facing, and then join them together. I sew the skirt panels together on one side and then encase the raw edges with single fold bias tape. Next, I pin and sew in the side pockets. After the pockets are in, I join the waistbands to the skirt. Unfortunately, the skirt ended up being too narrow to fit the waistband, but rather than trying it on first, I cut a quarter inch off the top edge of the skirt so it aligned to the waistband perfectly. Then I pinned it all together and tried it on after. This ended up being a terrible mistake. As you can see, it is way too big on me, and largely because the waistband was supposed to be cut down, and for whatever reason I decide to cut the skirt down to fit the waistband. The waistband also puffs out, and I believe that's because it's curved, and the bib is too long and it looks just silly. With all this, I just really don't like it. So back to the cutting floor. I cut the waistband apart, and then using my long ruler to mark out, I cut off the bend in the front of the waistband. This is what I believe is causing that puff out, and though it works for an apron, it just doesn't work for a pinafore. I trim off about an inch from the sides as well, and then I mark out the back band to match the front side's width. Next, I trim the bib by two inches, opting to not make a transformer pinafore this time. I also line the bib up to the front band and pin so I can unpick the seam between the pins and lay out the band outside in across the bib between the untucked pins and trace the curve. 
I'm going to mimic this curve so it sits nice and flat when I sew the bib into the waistband. This time before I sew anything down, I do give it a try on just to make sure it works to my liking. It is still a smidge loose, but I don't want it to be too tight. And I definitely like the bib size now, so I think this is going to be better. I sew the bib closed and move on to resizing the skirt, which I did not film because I was getting burnt out on this project and forgot. But basically I took in the skirt by strategically placing tucks of equal size and placement along the top edge. Once it lined up with the waistband, I joined them together. After I add the zipper by stitching it normally on one side and then partially normal on the other side, I zip it up and then flip it in and top stitch the partial side all the way up and over the flap. I know this is kind of a hot take on a zipper insert, but I don't care one flying patch pocket at this point. All I have left is the hem and finishing work. For the hem, I ironed out some lavender colored bias and I pinned it to the right side of the skirt edge while Pepper Strength checked the tape. I did run out of lavender, so I asked Mr. Black if this dusty blue would work and he said yes, so perfect. With that, I joined the bias tape to the skirt. Now for the home stretch. I hand stitched the back waistband with a slip stitch. I often use a heavyweight polyester embroidery thread for most of my finishing work to ensure strength and long lasting wear. I only use other thread if it's gonna show on the front and clash with the outside fabric. It's at this point that Pepper tells me I need to take a minute, which at the time I didn't appreciate, but after giving her some pets and she decides to settle in, I have to let it be for the evening. Much to my chagrin. I let it be for the evening and return tomorrow to add a flat hook and clasp to the flap along with a big blue button as a decorative element. Why blue? So they match the blue buttons on the back, of course. For the back, I cut the extra strap material and pin where the strap is going to go before tucking in the raw fabric and then slip stitching it closed. Pepper, no! No break! Then finally, I hand stitch the hem tape to the underside using a blind hem stitch. This is done by grabbing only a few threads on the front side and tacking them to the tape on the not front side. With all that said and done, it is now finally time for the reveal. project down and I gotta say I absolutely love how this came out despite it being a lot shorter than what I normally go for. Uh, I love how floofy it is. I mean I just I can't stop doing this and I have not even shown you the best part and that is it is glow in the dark fabric which means see isn't it cute? Okay all right so back to the light. I love circle skirts. I just think that they're a bit of a pain to make because I, I don't know, I just can't math very well. And it is very short for me. I think it's an appropriate amount of shortness in general. Like I don't think, you know, my hoo-ha is not going to show and it's not, well maybe. No, my hoo 
how it's not going to show when I bend over or I'm not going to sit bare butt on a chair when I sit down. I don't know, maybe I will. Anyway, my point is that I'm getting at is it's not inappropriately short. It's just short for me because I don't like having my knees exposed. I think it's, I don't know, strange for people to see my kneecaps. However, I do think this really works despite being so short because it is so floofy thanks to it being a circle skirt. Although it does look really cute and I might have to invest in some knee-high socks because I feel adorable. Uh, the other things that I'm a little meh about is these detachable bows. And the reason I made these detachable is when you wash bows, they get kind of wrinkly and they're very hard to iron out. The only problem with that is for one, they're easy to pop off and on, which I can really see myself losing these. And they rotate. It could just look like this and I'm not, I'm, I don't really pay attention, so it's just gonna look weird and upside down. So I might go in and maybe do Velcro. It won't make it more secure, but at the very least it'll keep it upright. And the other thing is the size. It's, it is probably a size or two too big. It's supposed to go over things, so it's not that big of a deal that it is a size or two too big. The thing that annoys me the most is it would have been fine if I didn't mess with it, but I didn't give myself the chance. I told myself, you've made it too small. It's going to be too tight. You're so much bigger, which is a terrible thing to tell yourself because in this case, that's not true. I had made it probably would have been a fine size and having to size it down sucks. Not that it's impossible, obviously. It's just, it added so much more time to this piece and it could have been prevented if I just did proper try-ons and I didn't psych myself out thinking, oh no, you made it too small. It's one of those things, you let your insecurities talk and it messes everything up and then you're just stuck being mad at yourself and that's not fun. Anyway, enough beating myself up. <laughs> Let's get down to grades. The grade for this is an F. It's just enough, it has to be. I mean, I did use bias tapes, all kinds of bias tapes, and I did use a bunch of remnant pieces of interfacing. That's great and all, but the fact is I bought this fabric for this project. And my 2023 goal was to buy no fabric for the year, thus making this project a big fat F. However, that F does not detract from the fact that I do really like this outfit and I think it's very cute. It came out really nicely despite all my shortcomings. I'm happy with it. So it's okay that the grade isn't great. The grade is just superfluous really. So it's not bad to get an F. It's just more of, you missed the mark on what it was supposed to be, even though the project itself came out fine, which tend to be a lot of my projects in college. <laughs> Regardless of my shortcomings and my grades, I'm just happy you're here. Thank you so much for watching my videos and thanks for having patience with me. Life just gets kind of in the way and unfortunately I don't I don't make YouTube videos full time or at any sort of time. It's just my extra time and I don't have a lot of extra time during this season. With that being said, I hope you liked this video, and if you did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing as I do try to release a new video every other Sunday and sometimes a bonus or two in between. Until next time, I hope you have a good day. Bye! And that is because, let's see, let's start over. Hello, my name is Eric. No, no, no. I can't get over there because my skirt is too big to get over there without knocking everything over so you're gonna have to wait. Is that okay with you Miss Pepper? Mmm, where is this going? It's going nowhere. <laughs>